to be modified the passive nature of these lectures and enhance student engagement and learning outcomes in large lectures. Okay, so that's the main question behind the course mirror project. So specifically, we are working on a, a mobile application. It's called Course Mirror, and it prompts students to reflect on the course content after each class. Okay, throughout the semester. So think about you know you are going to a physics class. It's taking like 50 minutes, and at the end of the class, your smartphone is asking you, okay, describe what was confusing. Tell me what's going on. Tell me what you found most interesting, okay? So th that's the main idea. But let's say there are 200 students in this class, and let's say everybody's participating. That means 200 responses, right? This is a lot of data after each class. So how are you going to use that much data? How are you going to understand what the students are telling? So that's the part, actually, the mobile application creates summaries, okay, based on the common themes that students are telling. By using natural language processing, it creates summaries, okay. It shows, like, these five things are the most common issues that students are telling us that they found as difficult or confusing or needed more details. So what we do with that summary? We provide that summary back to students. We also provide this summary back to instructors. So why we are providing back to students? So students can see you know, what's going on in this class. So maybe the same things you listed are there in the summary. Maybe it's very different than what you listed. So if it is the same, that's different, right? So you are saying, OK, most of the class struggle the same points that I'm struggling. If it is different, you may say, oh, there are other things that I have no idea. Or maybe those things were simple for you, but it looks like most of the students are telling these are the confusing issues. What can instructor do? So instructor can do a lot of things, right? So they know now you know, what's going on in this class. So in a large lecture, they don't have that luxury. So they cannot ask. Like they may ask, but at the end of the day, they will be interacting maybe a couple of students. But there are 200 students in this class. And this is happening maybe two, three times a week for 15 weeks, right? So there's a lot of lecturing. So with this, we are trying to provide some sort of information back to students and instructors by prompting students to reflect on their learning experiences. So that's the heart of the project, OK? All right. So this is the standard version of the course mirror, how it looks like. So just let's say there's an industrial engineering class. So this is the lecture list. So student clicking on, let's say, lecture 14. So some question like that. Describe what was confusing or needed more detail. So we expect a student writing a sentence, maybe a couple keywords, maybe longer. You know, it's up to students. It's open-ended. They submit. Then we, again, create a summary like this. Okay? It's not real time. So you submit here, but uh, the summary waits because we wait for a while. Most of, so most of the students can submit their reflections. Let's say you are taking a class on Tuesday and Thursday, so we ask you this on Tuesday, okay? The summary is available by Wednesday, okay? So for Thursday's class, summary will be available, let's say, by Saturday, something like that, okay? So this is the standard version. What the standard version is, it's open-ended, so there is no scaffolding here. It's just a question, and students are expected to write. So that's the main idea, like this is showing you know, student reflection, this instructor feedback cycle we call as the uh, reflection and feedback cycle. So like this is a real reflection, for example. One student wrote, it was confusing to find the proper way for all the functions to work together. Another student write, I'm still a little bit confused with how the function scripts work. So you can think about sentences like this 100 times or 200 times. So what we do with this again, you know, these reflections may help students and instructors to engage in diagnosis to identify gaps or difficulties in comprehension of knowledge. Okay, so what can they do? They may seek new information. They may deploy new study strategies individually or in groups like extra problem solving practice, seeking additional tutoring support from the instructor, teaching assistants or peers. So these are students. So instructors can use this information to provide additional information, learning resources, study guides, practice problems, targeted tutoring sessions. Maybe, you know, they can do all these things based on the 
the information they receive. OK, so these are the, some of the research findings. So this project is, I uh, have been working on this since 2014. So we implemented in 12 classrooms, 12 large lectures, uh, physics, computer science, mathematics, psychology. So students willing to submit reflections in a timely manner. So that's the first step, right? So we need to get student reflections. If they are not using, we don't have any data. We don't have any reflections. So like this benefited from the reflection feedback cycle. So we uh, studied, you know, if this RF cycle helps students in terms of academic performance. So we compare, for example, let's say a calculus session without using this model with the same instructor. Then another semester, we implemented the uh, reflection cycle model and we compare students' exam scores. OK, so these are based on the research finding. The reflection quality improved over time. That's another thing, like the reflection quality. If somebody asks you, you know, describe what was confusing, needed more detail, at the beginning, you may provide something very basic. You may provide a couple keywords. But what we observe, the reflections become more specific over time. So students start writing more and start writing more specific details about what was confusing. And we also uh, create automated and human-generated summaries. Again, for the summaries I mentioned, the nature language processing is basically an algorithm creating a summary. But you know, it's an algorithm, so we don't know the quality of the summary. So in the meantime, we ask TAs to create summaries by using the same reflection. So we can compare human-generated summary versus computer-generated summary. right? Because computer can generate some uh, stupid summaries then the students may feel like, what's going on? Like, this doesn't make any sense. You know, there are just a bunch of words here, but there is no meaningful sentence. So we need to be careful, because if you provide a, a summary like that, then the users, students or instructors, may feel this is not working, right? So that's another line of research we do, compare human versus algorithm. All right, so these are the two prompts we typically use so far. So describe what was confusing or needed more details. So this is the one prompt within the course mirror we ask students. And the other prompt was describe what you found most interesting in today's class. OK, so actually, I would like to get feedback from you guys. So these are the prompts we have been using. But what other prompts can be used? You know, How can we improve these prompts? Any ideas? We don't always ask both of them. Like we pick one and ask, let's say, describe what was confusing or needed more details. Sometimes we ask the other one. Sometimes we ask both back to back. Yes, please. Well, I was going to say, you know, you ask what is interesting. I'd also ask what is not necessarily interesting. Mm -hmm. Not interesting. OK. A lot of students are sometimes start to tune out here. OK. Yes, again, I'm looking for feedback. Literally, please tell me. It is like more difficult for students to respond, I believe. And it, again, students typically, when they take a one class, they have the same instructor over and over. So they don't have the power to change it, at least in that semester. So that question might be not helpful. Let's say a bunch of responses are coming related to that. What are you going to do with that information? Like, what can we improve? I mean, maybe that's valuable info. I don't know. So more specifics, like yeah. what concepts, like examples, on. OK. Also like, uh, like you, what was the most important part of that whole page? Like what topics did you want to know? Mm -hmm. So, so the, instead of like interesting, maybe most important? Yeah, most, well that way you can see like maybe they got the most important mm -hmm. part. Like if they're secure, so they can see like, mm -hmm. hey, they got the main concept here. So they don't feel like they, yeah, they mm -hmm. the main concept is not what they're actually looking at. Mm -hmm. So the reason we ask the first one is we are thinking like, you know, that's the valuable part. I mean, if students struggling with a certain concept, you know, how can we help them? So with that part. Therefore, we keep asking, but, you know, there might be a better way to 
deducted information. What else? I, I saw a couple more hands. Any other feedback about the prompts we used? Mm -hmm. They can realize that this this works. They can keep this the same. While if something isn't mentioned, then I see. one can imply that. that mm -hmm. So instead of asking what was confusing, something like, you know, what you learn or what was clear or something in a very specific way. Um, so there was talk about engaging and not being sort of like educated and passive. Mm -hmm. um, so I may not find a lot of things interesting about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you about the real data. Sometimes, because it's open-ended, right? Yeah. We are getting like none, nothing, yeah. NA, things like that, okay? So, and that is really bad for us because we would like to get as much information as possible. Therefore, I'm asking, you know, how can we make this better so we can get more reflections? And one thing I can tell, so the reflections are anonymous. For example, we don't, you know, the reflections come Instructors have no idea who is writing what. It's like course evaluation after each class. But we are not talking about the you know, you know, um, person's character or values or like we are specifically focusing on the content. You know, how can we make this content uh, better? Like so you can perform well these things. Okay, I will show you another version. Okay, so the first version I show you was the standard version. We are working on adaptive version. Okay, adaptive version is, okay, same prompt, let's say, describe what was confusing or needed more details. Okay, students write nothing, right? Let's say, order is like that. We ask something, this text is not appearing, so this please think carefully is not there. Okay, we ask that student wrote nothing. So, we, that's not an information for us, so we are re-asking. So, something else appears on the mobile app. Please think carefully, a good reflection needs to be more specific. Okay, so we are again forcing the <laughs> student to tell us something, right? So this is kind of annoying, I know, but I mean at the end of today we would like to get information. So we are trying to prompt this person really to think about what's going on. There should be something, nothing. So let's say another response, right? The whole lecture was confusing, so that's fine, but it's not specific. I mean. How can we address this? Like, what can we do about that? So is there something specific? So another thing appears here. Could you please tell us more details? So again, this adaptive based on what you're writing. OK, these are coming from actual classroom. So the concept of affordance was confusing. OK, so this is good. And you can see also color coding at the top. It's changing from red to something greenish, bluish. And let's say. After four prompts, students writing the difference between hidden and false affordance terms was confusing. So that's something more specific. And that's something we can provide back this information. So that's much better than nothing, right? In terms of information or in terms of reflection. So this is the adaptive version. Again, all these prompts need to be tested. Think carefully because there's a thin line here being pushy, annoying versus trying to help students. So that's the the balance we are trying to strike. So this is the adaptive version. So what do you think about the adaptive version? Is it annoying? Would there be an option to use this as a way of <coughs> you making it understood as you can? Mm -hmm. So there's nothing that is confusing. Would someone like that want to use this way of saying there's nothing confusing about? I mean, again, at the end of today, you can just skip this, right? You may not use it. But we are really trying to, you know, be user friendly, right? So that's the human computer interaction. So how can you do something that user can use that's beneficial for the students and that's a valuable information for the us and for the instructor? Yes, there might be times that's really nothing confusing and there might be 
The problem is, you know, when you ask things like that, uh, if students don't want to think about it, they just want to say NA and submit. So we are trying to stop that behavior. Because again, based on our prior research, what we are finding is like how these things are coming, right? So like uh, what we found, okay, there is a relation, there is a correlation between students who are submitting more specific reflections tend to perform better than the ones submitting less specific ones or things like nothing, okay? So that's the point. But again, we don't know causality, right? Is writing a specific reflection making you a better learner for that concept? Or maybe you are already performing very well, therefore you are writing very specific reflections. So that relation is we don't know the, the direction of the uh, causality. But we know there's a correlation. And we need to figure out if prompting students to write something more specific uh, helps them to perform better in terms of their academic performance. Okay? That's the, the main idea behind it. Okay, what else about the adaptive version? What other feedback can we get, please? I mean, we may hide the green bar again. This is just for showing purposes, like what we are thinking in the behind. Okay, yeah, so maybe you don't see the, the bar, but uh, you know, these additional prompts, the italic ones, stop showing yeah, once we are feeling confident that this is a specific reflection. Oh yeah, and yeah, right? That's another thing, like user can game the system. They can just type a bunch of words and the algorithm may feel, oh, this is very specific. You know, you can just put some random words there, 10 of them, and the algorithm may think, oh, this is very specific because it's very long without evaluating if the full sentence makes any sense or not. What else? As students, tell us. Sometimes I do come out of lecture feeling like that, like everything was confusing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, at least, you know, from class to class, there should be some title heading, right? So instead of whole class, maybe you may say, I mean, the friction idea was confusing, like if this is the physics or, you know, something more specific within calculus, something more specific related to that chemistry class, that dynamic class, that heat transfer class. You know, again, we are really trying to, so that's the purpose, you know, if we can push you think a little deeper, you know, maybe this is helpful for you. I mean, if you can think not the whole class, but you know, that specific example was confusing. That specific graph was confusing. Um, like quiz questions, something like quiz question number five. I have no idea, something like that. So we can go back and look at the quiz question number five. Well, maybe like after it said that, like you give me like multiple choice options. Mm -hmm. That's the difficult part because f to do that, you need to have information about every class. So we need to make it customizable for each class. Like that's the, like that would be great, but then the application needs to be very specific for a, let's say a chemistry class, for a physics class. We need to know what is on that day that you guys are learning on that. And we need to be on the same page with the instructors because they may tell us on the syllabus, this is the plan, but things may delay, then the application may start doing stupid things. And you can see list of things that doesn't actually covered on that day. What else? Is there an issue like uh, that's quite fake in each of the um, questions that you usually have the professor ask some other questions? Mm -hmm. Yes, so these questions are customizable. So there's an instructor web page. Instructor can customize if they want to. They may ask different prompts. What else? Any other feedback? Can you repeat again? I can't hear you, sorry. If you get a response like that, mm -hmm. maybe it would lead you into a different question that would kind of guide you to I see. 
I see. So I see screen may change. So now you're in a different screen. That's a good idea. You were saying something. Any other questions or feedback about this? And I know I don't have much time. I will just want to, yeah, I'm already out of my time. I just want to show you one more thing. So this is one way of how we are looking at the student reflection. You know, so you can look at, oh, sorry. So you see that specific four versus none, one. So that's the, for example, how we evaluate. That's the logic behind how we evaluate the student reflection. So the hypothesis behind this is as the reflection become more specific throughout the semester, we are seeing these students are performing better than the ones at the none or vague level. Okay? Again, we don't know what's causing what, but we see this relation. Another thing is we are understanding the attitudes from reflection. So you can see here. Uh, students are telling us something about perceived difficulty, so they perceive this as the concepts as difficulty. So something may be related to their confidence about the, the class. You know, I'm confident that I will be performing well in this class. Or their interest. Or the combination of like difficulty, interest, things like that. So these are the two things we do from this reflection data. And we are thinking like in what other ways we can evaluate student reflections. I'm not expecting you to answer this question. Uh, this is the end of my presentation today. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions about the course mirror or in general, that's my email address. Also, we have the coursemirror.com webpage so you can learn more what we are doing. Okay? Thank you again. <laughs>